Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me get it closer to the screen. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a video about John Cena, as you can see. Ten things WWE wants you to forget about John Cena. Now, this is a new series called WTH. What the heck series? This is number one. <coughs> now, if you want me to continue this series, leave a like down below, comment, subscribe, please tell me how what you thought of it, and if you want me to continue this. I'm going to do four more, four more videos after this, each one, one per day, okay? I'm going to be doing that, so let me start it. champion in history, he's superhumanly invincible, and he went to night school to get his doctorate in thugonomics. So that's nice. He's been the face of the WWE for the better part of a decade, but even Bulletproof John has had his moments of weakness. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 things WWE wanted to forget about John Cena. Number 10, he's finishing moves old names. Today, John Cena's as corny a mainstream symbol of virtuous Americana as you can get. The only way he could be more American is if he started singing the national anthem whilst riding a bald eagle made out of the 1950s. He's a hero to children around the globe, which makes it even more surprising to casual fans that he used to be a naughty little boy. A very naughty little boy indeed. He would gay bash in delightful form of white rap, hit people with metal chains, and named his finishing moves after swears. The AA, the attitude adjustment, was once known as the FU, and the STF used to be the STFU. If you don't know what either of those letters stand for, congratulations on maintaining your innocence. Now, now, now listen to this. I already watched this, and this is kind of weird what he says. And I will warn you, he does curse. <coughs> right here. So, I'm letting you know, parents, uh, kids, go get your parents and... Uh, let them know what you're watching. I'm not a bad guy. I just want you to watch out. And if you don't want your kids or you <clears throat> to watch this, you don't. They don't have to. And don't please don't dislike the video because it's not Minecraft or Call of Duty or whatever I do. Okay, so please don't get angry at me. Okay, listen. Number stand for congratulations on maintaining your innocence. Now f off. Number nine, he spanked Stephanie McMahon on live TV. No. Now that's, as you can tell, if you watch WWE, <coughs> Mr. Mr. McMahon's daughter. Yeah. Less. On SmackDown in July 2003, naughty John Cena rapped at current GM Stephanie McMahon. Now, Steph was going through her sexy, sexy phase at the time, wearing low-cut tops, doing sexy faces, and being felt up by ladies at Eric Bischoff's behest. Different time. Anyway, Cena rapped at Steph. Nobody's watching her, Steph. Why don't you let me smack that ass? Stephanie McMahon then bent over, and he spanked her on global TV while she was working for her dad's company. That's weird. Considering Cena's current relationship with the authority, I don't think they want Cena's high-speed bro to be remembered. Number eight, Bull Buchanan. No, I don't remember either. Bull Buchanan has always been the other guy. He was the other guy when partnered with the big boss man, the other guy when part of Writer Center, and he was the other guy when partnered with Albert, who himself was the other guy when partnered with Test, who himself was the other guy when partnered with Booker T. It's a vicious hierarchy and bulls at the bottom. He teamed with then heel John Cena as B squared, and it never really works. He just didn't seem very hip hop. Sorry, Bull. No. no. Tell me, did that picture... Let me go back. He just didn't seem very hip-hop. Uh, tell me, does that kind of look like Vin Diesel? Just tell me, kind of, the muscles and everything? I don't know. Sorry, Paul. Number seven, Mickey James. In 2009, Mickey James and John Cena got it on, I guess. For a few weeks, WWE had vignettes of James and Cena getting their nervous flirt on. It was all a bit awkward, but sort of endearing, kind of, maybe. Now, this part is a little bit inappropriate. So, um, if you don't want your kids watching this, once again, th there are some inappropriate parts. Um... Yes, there are pictures of side boobs and everything, but it's not fully unclothed women. I'm sorry. Not sorry about the uh, uh, unclothed crap. I'm, I'm sorry. This is one of those awkward days. 
It's been a rough day. Cute. Except when Cena would hand her panties like one air saying you left these last night. Prince Charming, everybody. So far, so typical WWE ham-fisted romance. Mr. But what was Mr. weird about the segments was how they ended. You got the impression that WWE were building to something, but no. The vignettes just stopped. Rumours abound that they were dating in real life, and it ended. So it ended on screen, too. Either way, it's a weird, tiny, micro-relationship, and it's never been mentioned since. Number six, ruining the nexus. From Bray Wyatt to Dolph Ziggler, John Cena's been accused of hindering Momentum in my now the, tell me, in the comments, does anybody remember Nexus? <coughs> Cause I sure as heck do. I'm sorry I'm interrupting this so much, but I, I, I just gotta tell you a few things, okay? That's all. Much the same way that a brick wall hinders a car. No one felt this more keenly than Wade Barrett and the Nexus, the adorable ragamuffins who tried to murder everybody on the WWE roster. The Nexus were white hot in the WWE and were riding all the momentum in the world going into SummerSlam 2010. It was Team Nexus versus Team WWE. John Cena was the last man surviving for his team. He took a DDT on the concrete, then came back to pin Justin Gabriel and Wade Barrett for the win. It was a classic case of Super Cena making his opponents look foolish. Chris Jericho, Edge, and even Cena himself have gone on record saying that the way the match ended was a boneheaded decision, damaging to the rookies' careers and something Cena wants to put behind him. Number five, ready to rumble. Hey, remember when David Arquette won the WCW Championship? Of course he do it helped kill the company. All of that absolute applesauce was to promote a movie called Ready to Rumble about Arquette and his pal being a pair of clown shoe wrestling fans. It had DDP in it, it had Goldberg in it, and hey look, Booker T, Billy Kidman, and it's that... John Cena? In a scene featuring Oliver Platt and Goldberg in a wrestling gym, you can see training in the background a dyed blonde 22-year-old little Johnny Cena. It was filmed in the gym where Cena was training to be a wrestler, so he took on a role as an extra. Turns out the face of the WWE first surfaced in a WCW joint. For shame. Number four, he can't protect his dad. John Cena's dad, John Cena Sr., that's hard to say, has actually had experience in the wrestling biz, working as a manager for some independent shows in Boston. So while a lot of wrestlers' family members like to stay out of the spotlight, John Cena Sr., Cena, John Cena Sr., Sr., has been dragged into it by his hair. Edge went to the Cena family home in Boston and slapped the middle-aged man around. He was famously punted by Randy Orton, and John Cena's dad even had a match with Randy Orton on Raw. Spoilers, it didn't end well for Pops. Orton even attacked Cena Sr. last year. Now, I'm not saying that John is a bad son for putting his dad in harm's way. I'm just going to imply it. Then move on. Number three, he was a bad friend to Zack. Poor Zack Ryder, the guy got himself over without help from anyone via his popular YouTube show Z, True Long Island Story. Ryder got himself noticed by the fans based purely on his charm and never say die doofus optimism. The fans demanded a push for him and WWE crowned him the US champion. Then, a John Cena storyline happened to him. Zack got embroiled in the Embrace the Hate storyline, which saw him lose his championship due to a rib injury from Kane, be chokeslammed through the stage, tombstone, confined to a wheelchair, and forced to watch Eve, a lady he was sweet on, kiss John Cena. That is bad form John. He was utterly humiliated in the view designed to put over Cena and no one else. His rising star was caught and crushed, and John Cena smiled all the way home. Do, 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 do. Number two, he got kayfabe stabbed. What? Carlito was a man who spat in the face of people who didn't want to be cool. Also, when he debuted in 2004, he had a bodyguard called Jesus. As part of the storyline on Carlito's wishes, Jesus stabbed Cena in a nightclub, which is attempted murder. That's, that's attempted murder. Did Cena call the cops? Nope. He challenged Carlito to a wrestling match, because that's nature's only true justice. Cena beat Carlito, and the whole literally trying to kill him thing was put behind him. John Cena is very forgiving. And number one, Five Knuckles Shuffle is flat. Yeah, if, um... This is a big shocker for you people, because this is really bad. And I don't know if Cena or anybody knows about this, but, but um, just watch. This is, remember, this is my WH series, what the heck, so, what the heck, really? So, watch it. Uh, I'm afraid to press the space bar. Uh, uh, three, two, one, go. Nine, four. WANKING! That's what the phrase means. Five Knuckle Shuffle means masturbation. Hey, kids! So that's our list. Did you agree? Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to... Okay, you guys. That, um... That video was kind of weird. So, um... That was very weird. Remember, WH... WTH series... See, well, see, season one. That's what it is. Season one. 
So, um, yeah. That's all for today. <coughs> Tomorrow I'll be posting another one. I'm sorry if this was really awkward for you guys, but <coughs> it, it's a What the Heck series. So, what do you expect? Anyway, you guys, I am trying to hit 30 subs. Also, not just that, but I also want to try to aim for 20, 25. You know, I'm at 19 right now, so it, it really helps if someone just subscribes. I'm not being demanding or anything. It just really helps. But anyway, leave a like, comment, and please subscribe. You know, tell me what you thought of the video. My friends will, obviously. And, um, they're going to think this is weird and stupid. And people are going to say, well, why'd you even do this series? I'll tell you that at the end of this season. See you in the next episode. Peace!